the right stock at the right time. Good morning, you're watching All You Need to Know on Bloomberg Quint Live and I'm Alex Matthew. First the headlines this morning, Asian markets are off to a muted start for their first trading day of the year. Japanese markets though are shut on account of a holiday. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says that former RBI Governor Urjit Patel wished to resign six to seven months earlier owing to personal reasons, adding that there was no political pressure on him to quit. The government mopped up 94,726 crore rupees as collections from the goods and services tax. These fell for the second straight month. The Reserve Bank of India has announced a one-time restructuring scheme for certain small borrowers. The scheme applies to loans not exceeding 25 crore rupees. And the Mumbai NCLT allows the government to reopen the accounts of ILNFS and its subsidiaries going back five years to a certain financial mismanagement. Now, you're already aware, of course, that the US markets have been shut and so therefore no cues from that market. We'll take you through perhaps a few headlines uh, that may set you up for the day's trade. But uh, let's find out what's happening in Asia. As I mentioned earlier, in the headlines, it's a muted start. But to get you all the details, Rosalind Chin of uh, Bloomberg News is joining me live from Hong Kong. Thanks so much for joining us, first of all, and Happy New Year. How, what are you picking up on the first trading day of the, of the year? Well, I think many traders are hoping a happy new year will bring a fresh start to the markets in what was a pretty dismal 2018. The uh, benchmark uh, index for Asia, MSCI Asia Pacific index right now is pretty much flat, but it has been inching, edging just a little bit into positive territory early in the session. Actually now just flipping into negative. Now we've got uh, muted action here, partly because Japan is closed all week. So no, no action there. Although the yen we do see has continued strengthening currently at 109.67 to the US dollar. Now elsewhere in the region, we are waiting for some numbers out of China, the Chai Xin manufacturing PMI data. Now, the earlier gauge this week, which is the official numbers, did show a contraction for the month of December. So we're waiting to see whether the Chai Xin numbers will actually underline that uh, contraction, the slowdown in the Chinese economy. Korea had a late open today. Uh, it uh, began trading only about 30 minutes ago. Right now, the Kospi is gaining about a quarter of 1%. Now, uh, in um, South Korea, we are actually watching so-called peace stocks. That is after Kim Jong-un in his New Year address uh, did say that he was willing to uh, reopen Kaesong and also that that's a facility, the joint facility runs with South Korea that manufactures the products and also um, Mount Gumgang Resort without conditions. But at the same time, in his New Year's speech, he did also uh, issue a warning about a new path, as he called it, in nuclear um, talks if the U.S. did not actually relax its economic sanctions. So a bit of a mixed... Um, uh, message there coming from uh, North Korea, but uh, likely to affect uh, peace stocks uh, listed in South Korea today. And of course, Hong Kong right now opened for trade very uh, a few minutes ago, just about three minutes ago, and that is losing about a third of 1% at this point in time. So a mixed picture, really, as we go into 2019. But of course, investors are hoping that it may be a better year than 2018. Back to you. All right, thanks so much for that, Rosalind. Well, global markets. Uh as you've obviously been looking at over the last few months, including those in the U.S. and Europe, posted their worst year since the global financial crisis struck in 2008. But what should you be looking at with regard to global markets in 2019? Well, Andrea Papuk of Bloomberg News filed this story for us earlier in the day. I don't think we'll probably get any clear picture until those Hong Kong and China markets open with Japan closed. Um, uh, very little in the, uh, happening in the Australian stock markets. However, we do have the U.S. Uh, S&P 500 futures up relatively strongly for Asia this morning. And that's, uh, that's perhaps uh, on the back of uh, news that there could be some sort of a deal struck uh, to end this U.S. shutdown. I mean, having said that, yeah, 2018, investors are still 
reeling from what was a pretty horrible year. Uh, and even though the uh, S&P 500 ended up a little bit stronger uh, on Monday, it, it still had a pretty dismal December, uh, down about 9%. And, you know, we also had Japan and markets in Europe, you know, entering a bear market. I mean, this morning we also have, you know, uh, oil uh, higher, which is, which is positive, but that's after... Um you know, after its, its first annual loss in, since 2015, and I think you know a lot of the, the a lot of the um, uh, the factors that were weighing on investors at the end of last year have not changed. Uh, you know, as we start 2019, you know, there's concern about trade, higher U.S. interest rates uh, out there. You know, lofty valuations, especially in U.S. equities. Uh, you know, slowing global growth, uh, and, and that's something as well as the increased volatility that that we saw, especially you know, last week. And I think investors are still trying to make sense of this um, and, and, you know, and are very sensitive to, uh, to, to any sort of uncertainties uh, as we go into 2019. All right, well, a big update coming in from Asia at the start of the year. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has expressed anguish over talks with the U.S. President Donald Trump not making enough headway. In a New Year's address to North Koreans, Kim issued a warning to U.S. President uh, saying that he may have to resort to other means to make further headway. Stephen Engel of Bloomberg News is uh, joining in with more in this report. It's a lot different than last year, of course, when uh, we were ramping up the rhetoric and uh, we seem to be on the brink of some sort of uh, nuclear brinkmanship, but uh, where Kim Jong-un actually said, I have a nuclear button on my desk at all times, in which Donald Trump then tweeted in response saying, I too have a button and it is bigger and more powerful and um, it, it works. So it's a little bit different situation now, but again, Kim Jong-un in his nuclear New Year's address to his people, uh, pretty much showing some impatience or frustrations with the level of progress since talks have pretty much stalled since their June summit in Singapore. Uh, he says his patience is running out with the United States and threatened that the North Koreans could take a new path. He didn't say what that path would be, but he said it could take a new path uh, in nuclear talks uh, with the U.S. if it doesn't relax those tough economic sanctions. Uh, now, he did not offer any particular new initiatives, uh, and that is is something, of course, we're going to have to read the tea leaves, and that's why we look at this New Year's address so closely. He did say, though, he is willing to meet with uh, Donald Trump again, which Donald Trump has said he wants to do as well sometime in the early part of 2019. But Kim went on to say, if the U.S. does not deliver its promises uh, and misjudges our people's patience, we will have no choice but to seek a new path. So we'll have to see what that new path might be. Of course, of course Donald Trump has been a bit preoccupied uh, with the government shutdown, with the border, with the trade war with China. Perhaps Kim Jong-un is getting a little bit uh, short shrift on the attention span of Donald Trump. All right. Well, uh, let's turn now to the Indian markets. Agam Vakil is here to set you up for the day's trade and also to tell you what's happening in the futures and options space. Agam, well, more or less getting back on track with regard to global markets. US markets, of course, still shut, uh, will ba be back on track today. But a few cues coming in from Asia, seemingly a positive uptick as of now for the SGX Nifty. Yes, absolutely. And uh, we're going to see where, whether or not we actually hold on to the 1,900, uh, uh, considering the Nifty was about that. Of course, the SGX Nifty is indicating a flattish start right now at this point in time. But let's take a look at how we've seen a market span out yesterday. About a half percent gains, reclaiming 10,900 and the mid cap and the small cap indices well mixed cues coming in there banking indices also advancing to a certain extent with about one and a half percent gains for the nifty psu bank index but uh, in terms of uh, foreign institutional flows nothing coming through uh, very small gross numbers which means buy and sell numbers but moving on to uh, your well contributors we did see your HDFC twins along with ICICI Bank and Infosys provide the most amount in terms of support for the Nifty, thereby indicating advances. On the other hand, m and losing out in trade on back of weaker uh, well, auto sales numbers. But uh, coming down to your futures and options space, so what we're tracking right now is very little change in open interest for the Nifty futures. And for the Nifty banking futures, we're seeing an 18% increase 
towards fresh longs. Accumulation continues. Open interest distribution picture has not really changed as much and we're looking at a 700 point range based on maximum open interest which lies with 10,500 put and the 11,200 call. But yesterday's day of trade was a day where we saw a little more writing coming through around the 10,700 and the 10,800 puts. Let's move on and talk about your other variables like, uh, of course, stocks which remain in the band. One of them is Adani Power. That's, that's actually the only one. Uh, the Wix fell to around 4%, by around 4% to around 15.3. And uh, we had your Nifty Put Call Ratio, which edged up slightly higher to around 1.57. The Nifty Banking Put Call Ratio at around 1.15. And with that, in terms of stocks, uh, what we're looking at is, uh, well, gains in escorts and Indian Bank where we saw some fresh longs building in. On the other hand, Dabur and ACCC fresh shots. Bank of Baroda, of course, also saw a very strong day of trade considering PSUs were an up and about. And in terms of unwinding, again, uh, what we've seen in uh, something like a, uh, you know, a we, OG and financial is uh, longs unwinding after tremendous strength that we've seen. So uh, once again, Alex has been uh, mixed, and we're going to wait and watch about how as to how these broader markets pan out today as well. Now that we will have the rest of the global indices play. Absolutely. Thanks so much for that, Agam. Well, let's also talk about the Indian rupee. It started off uh, 2019 on a high note, building up on gains of the previous two sessions and adding another 34 paise yesterday to close at 69.43 against the US dollar. This was the highest close of the rupee, by the way, since early August. The dollar index was down by 0.3% at 95.87 against a basket of six currencies. Now, speaking about bonds, the yields on on corporate bonds across 10 years surged after state governments announced higher than expected borrowing for this quarter that's in line with the movement in government bonds. Well, let's shift focus now and speak about commodities. A lot of you are already interested in what's happening in the metal space and in the crude space. Well, Yashu Padhyay is joining in with an overarching picture of what to look at with regard to commodities. Good morning, Yash. What are you picking up? Morning, Alex. So crude oil prices, they started the year of 2019 on a positive note, uh, tracking a firmer uh, tone in the global stock markets after U.S. President Donald Trump uh, signaled he was open to a deal with the Democrats to end the government shutdown. Uh, Brent, Brent prices ended the day about four-tenths of a percent higher, building onto gains of nearly four percent on the last day of 2018. On the other hand, gold prices were largely flat uh, on, uh, on Monday. All right. Thanks so much for that, uh, Yash. Well, now let's see what's making headlines across the globe. Stephen Engel of Bloomberg News brings us all the first word headlines. Well, Australia's Prime Minister Scott Morrison started 2019 with a pre-election pitch to voters. In a New Year's Day video, Morrison promised tax cuts, support for drought-affected farmers, and record funding for schools and hospitals. He's hoping a pledge to deliver a budget surplus will reverse his government's slumping poll ratings. A budget will be handed down in April ahead of a vote, which must be held by May. Jair Bolsonaro has been sworn in as Brazil's president. The former army captain is promising to tackle crime, corruption and economic malaise in a wave of nationalism that's sweeping Latin America's largest country. A new opinion poll suggests that two months after his victory, 75 percent of Brazilians think he is the leader on the right track. However, the Real has given up most of its post-election gains. We have in front of us a unique opportunity to rebuild our country and to rescue the hope of our compatriots. I'm sure we will face huge challenges, but if we have the wisdom to hear the voice of the people, we will achieve our goals. Well, India will make physical settlement of all equity derivatives contracts mandatory from April this year. It's a bid to reduce volatility and curb excessive speculation. The Securities and Exchange Board says the charge change in rules will be staggered from April to October. However, the move may add to short-term volatility around the expiration of contracts on the last Thursday of every month. Global News 24 hours a day on air and at TikTok on Twitter, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Stephen Engel. This is Bloomberg. All right. And this, as you know, is Bloomberg Quint. You'll find a lot on the website of BloombergQuint.com as well. 
But uh, let's talk about the GST collections now. After touching the one lakh crore mark in step September, the government's GST collections fell for the second straight month in November. Collections for the month stood at 94,726 crore rupees, according to a financial ministry statement. Now, this is compared to 97,637 crore rupees in October. And as I told you, in the previous month, it was one lakh crore. Now, the government's total GST collection for the first eight months of the financial year stands at 8.6 lakh crore. The projected target for FY19, that's this current financial year, stands at 13.47 lakh crore. However, compliance saw a rise for the month of November. Total summary GSTR 3B returns filed crossed the 70 lakh mark for the first time. Well, Darshan Mehta is joining me now to tell you all about the stocks in the news. <coughs> Darshan, uh, good morning. What are you picking up with regard to the trade today? Yeah, so uh, auto sales numbers will be in focus. The biggest one will be Aisha Motors. Uh, motorcycle sales were down almost 13%, even though the exports were up 41%. Uh, the overall number came in much lower than what was there, so it was a big disappointment uh, from Aisha Motors. Uh, not a good set of numbers from Tata Motors either. If you're looking at the top line growth that's came in, uh, they are uh, they actually their domestic commercial passenger vehicle sales were down 8%. Uh, exports were down 36%. So overall, uh, weak sales numbers from both of them, and that is expected to weigh in on the stock. Among the smaller ones, VST tillers and tractors, power tiller sales were down 55% on a year-on-year -year basis and uh, tractor sales were down 1%. Uh, the other important stock that you need to watch out is Jet Airways. In, a, in an exchange filing, the company has said that the payment of interest and principal installment to a consortium of banks led by SBI uh, on 31st December has been delayed due to temporary cash, cash flow mismatch and the company is engaging with these banks to find a solution. Moil has cut the uh, prices on different grades of manganese ore by 10% and also offering 5 to 20% discount on select grades. NMDC will consider a share buyback on January 8th. Uh, well, Shambhal Fertilizer and Chemical says that they have declared the commencement of production from the Rajasthan plant uh, effective December 1, uh, January 1, sorry. Wiseman Forex promoters have said that they intend to send their entire 75% stake in the company to EBIX Group and there will be an open offer along with this. A uh, couple of other uh, news, uh, Glenmark Pharma, they completed the transfer of the company's API business to a wholly owned uh, arm Glenmark Life Sciences and when we spoke to Glenmark earlier they had said that you know uh, the move is because they want to get in a strategic partner into the company and finally Coal India, the December updates are, are there. Coal production was down 0.9% and offtake was down 1%. स्वयं गवर्नर साहब ने रिक्वेस्ट की अपने निजी कारणों से और मैं पहली बार आपको बताता हूं वे छह सात महीने से मुझे लगातार कह रहे थे लिखित में भी कहा था व्यक्तिगत रूप से उन्होंने मुझे लिख करके भेजा था पॉलिटिकल प्रेशर नहीं सवाल ही नहीं उठता है क्या कर्ज माफी करके किन किसानों को फायदा होता है कितने किसानों को फायदा होता है देश का बहुत कम वर्ग ऐसा है जो बैंकों से लोन लेता है ज्यादातर किसान साहूकार के पास से लोन लेता है और ये जब सरकार योजना बनाती है तो उसमें वो किसान नहीं आता है जो किसान को मरना पड़ रहा है वो इस व्यवस्था का हिस्सा नहीं है वो उसे बाहर है और इसलिए ये सिर्फ चुनावी स्टंट किए जा रहे हैं फिर भी अगर राज्य सरकारें करती हैं तो हम उनको रोकते नहीं हैं ये जो अंडर कंस्ट्रक्शन मकानों के लिए टैक्स जीएसटी और फिनिश मकान के लिए जीएसटी उसमें तो उसमें भी हम जैसे रेस्टोरेंट्स के लिए हमने किया कुछ नहीं भाई फाइव परसेंट में सब कर देंगे उस दिशा में हम जाना चाहते थे उसमें भी कुछ लोगों के रिजर्वेशन थे तो ये जी में नहीं कर पाए अब वो कमेटी को गया है हम कोशिश करेंगे जितना जल्दी वो भी अगर हो सके कमेटी रिपोर्ट कर दे ये झटका नहीं है जी ये रातों रात नहीं हुआ है जी एक साल भर ये प्रक्रिया चली है बार बार कहा गया है उसके बाद ये करना पड़ा है और ये देश के स्वास्थ्य के लिए ये करना जरूरी था आर्थिक स्वास्थ्य के लिए करना जरूरी हमने भारतीय जनता पार्टी ने अपने मैनिफेस्टो में भी कहा है कि संविधान की मर्यादाओं में हम इसका समाधान करेंगे आज भी मामला सुप्रीम कोर्ट में है एक प्रकार से 
पूर्णता के किनारे पर आकर के बैठा हुआ है मैं जो कहता हूँ कोर्ट के अंदर कांग्रेस के वकील जो अड़ंगे डालते हैं वो बंद हो न्याय की प्रक्रिया को न्याय के तरीके से चलने दिया जाए उसको राजनीति के तनाशों से न तोला जाए और मामला न्यायपालिका में है उसको पूर्ण किया जाए न्यायपालिका से आने के बाद सरकार की जिम्मेवारी जहां शुरू होती है हम पूरी तरह प्रयास करने के लिए तैयार हैं भारतीय जनता पार्टी ने जिस गति से प्रगति की है उसको कोई इनकार नहीं कर सकता है और बार बार ये कहना है कि बीजेपी हारती चली जा हारती चली जा रही है इससे हारता नहीं होती है भारतीय जनता पार्टी मैंने अभी गिनाया आपको आसाम हो हरियाणा हो त्रिपुरा हो तो मोरल डाउन नहीं है पार्टी में मोरल डाउन होने का कोई ऐसा कारण ही नहीं है एक आत्मविश्वास है पूरा आत्मविश्वास के साथ बड़ी पार्टी आगे बढ़ रही है और 2019 में भी देश की जनता पर जिसका भरोसा है वो हम लोग हैं जनता के भरोसे पर समर्पित है हम लोग हैं और जनता के साथ जुड़े हुए कोई लोग हैं तो हम लोग हैं जनता वर्सेज गठबंधन होने वाला है मोदी तो जनता जनादन के प्रेम और आशीर्वाद का प्रतीक है और कुछ नहीं है मैं स्पष्ट मानता हूं कि इस बार का चुनाव देश की जनता की आशा आकांक्षाएं उसको बढ़ाएगा कौन वो जनता तय करेगी उसको नहीं बढ़ाएगा रुकावट पैदा करेगा सत्तर साल का अनुभव क्या है वो भी जनता तय करेगी जनता ही इस बार निर्णायक है पैंसठ की लड़ाई हुई विभाजन हुआ उस दिन भी लड़ाई हुई तो एक लड़ाई में पाकिस्तान सुधर जाएगा ये मुझे लगता है कि सोचने में बहुत बड़ी गलती होगी पाकिस्तान को सुधरने के लिए तो अभी और समय लगेगा देश का दुर्भाग्य है कि उसी दिन पॉलिटिकल पार्टी के कुछ लीडरों ने सर्जिकल स्ट्राइक पर शक खड़ा किया पाकिस्तान के लिए तो इस प्रकार से बोलना जरूरी था क्योंकि उनको वहां मॉरल टकाए रखने के लिए आवश्यक था लेकिन जो बात पाकिस्तान बोल रहा था वो हमारे देश के लोग बोल रहे थे अपने बात को वजन देने के लिए उदाहरण भी पाकिस्तान का दे रहे थे राजनीतिकरण वहीं से शुरू हुआ आपने देश की सेना के लिए अनाप शनाप शब्द बोले और मैं मानता हूं कि जिन्होंने इस प्रकार से देश की सेना पर इस प्रकार के आशंकाएं की हैं सर्जिकल स्ट्राइक पर आशंकाएं की और पहले ही दिन बयानबाजी कर करके इस प्रकार से उसको रौंद डालने की कोशिश की वो गलत हुआ है और इसलिए मैं स्पष्ट मत कहा हूं कि इसका कतई राजनीतिकरण नहीं होना चाहिए ये मेरे पर व्यक्तिगत आरोप नहीं है एक सरकार पर आरोप है सरकार पर आरोप मेरे पर व्यक्तिगत आरोप है तो उनको खोज करके निकालना चाहिए कि किसने दिया क्या दिया कहाँ दिया कहाँ रखा सब निकालना चाहिए उन्होंने दूसरी बात है कि संसद में मैंने विस्तार से इसका जवाब दिया है जहाँ भी मुझे पब्लिक में बोलने का मौका मिला है मैंने इस विस्तार से बताया है तीसरी बात है सुप्रीम कोर्ट तक मसला क्लियर हो चुका है सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने उसके बाल की खाल उधेड़ करके सारी चीज़ें निकाल कर रखे रख दी है फ्रांस के राष्ट्रपति जी ने बयान दे दिया है भारत के प्रधानमंत्री ने बयान दे दिया है उनको इतना कर लीजिए जो इतने सवाल मुझे पूछ रहे हैं वे जब भी बोले तो आप इतना कोई मीडिया में हिम्मत होनी चाहिए उनको पूछे कि ठहरिए भाई आप बताइए सिद्ध कीजिए आप जो आरोप लगा रहे हैं हमें बताइए ऐसे पत्थर मार के भाग मत जाइए The new year has begun and with it the countdown to this year's biggest political event kicks off as well. Political parties have barely 3 months to get into top gear before the general elections fully kick off. It's a contest that could be closer than previously believed especially after results of 5 state elections uh, of which Congress bagged 3 states. 3 months is a long time in politics and here is what both Rahul Gandhi and Prime Minister Narendra Modi need to do to stay ahead in the race. Let's start with Rahul Gandhi.
If there is one lesson from election results in three Hindi heartland states for Rahul Gandhi, it is that the consistent message on farmer distress and unemployment have worked for the Congress party. In fact, the BJP's vote share in rural areas has been on the decline. Right from the Gujarat elections where the Congress scored in rural areas to the elections in Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh and Madhya Pradesh. It's clear that rural distress and unemployment are key issues. Rahul Gandhi needs to keep the focus firmly on these two issues and not be sidetracked in divisive politics and personal attacks. Just talking about farm loan waivers though will not be enough. States won by the Congress in the Hindi heartland have been quick to begin implementation of farm loan waivers, but the success of this implementation will be key. Already, the BJP is questioning the Congress's track record in implementing waivers in the states of Karnataka and Punjab. Voters in these states will be unforgiving if the Congress does not deliver within the next three months. A stronger Congress just makes other potential allies uncomfortable. Potential allies like the Bahujan Samaj Party and Samajwadi Party have already made their displeasure felt at not being accommodated in the Madhya Pradesh government despite offering support. Meanwhile, a rejuvenated K. Chandrasekhar Rao has doubled efforts to form a non-Congress, non-BJP alliance before the next general elections, which would end up hurting the Congress the most. Rahul Gandhi should resist the temptation to project himself as prime ministerial candidate this would both keep a heads-up fight at bay as well as assuage allies. Let's come to Prime Minister Modi. Narendra Modi is still widely considered in the best position to win the next general election. The Prime Minister's personal popularity is still relatively intact despite voter anger on issues like demonetization and the implementation of GST. While the opposition lists out unfulfilled promises and the lack of achedin, Modi's counter could be a message that perhaps mistakes have been made, but the intention was always right. In fact, the BJP slogan of Saf Niyat Sahi Vikas could come most handy here. The Modi government has introduced higher MSPs, a crop insurance scheme, an income booster scheme by the name of PM Asha. Several BJP ruled states have also announced farm loan waivers, but these measures have done little to keep farmers happy. Modi needs to recognize these attempts have not worked instead of insisting that enough has been done. It is widely expected that a new plan to relieve farm distress could be seen in the new year, which would help in blunting the BJP's loss in rural votes to some extent. And of course, the BJP and Narendra Modi may be tempted to go back to default mode in the face of a tougher electoral scenario. The Ram Mandir issue has already cropped up, but this form of politics has come a cropper for the BJP in the recent past. Uttar Pradesh's controversial Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath campaigned heavily in the recently concluded five state elections. The BJP lost 60% of the seats where he campaigned as per an India spend analysis. Even in the run-up to 2014, Modi focused more on development than a polarizing campaign which helped grow the BJP vote share from 18% in 2009 to 31% in 2014. So here are some suggestions that we've made for both uh, Narendra Modi and Rahul Gandhi before the election fever uh, gets going. At the end of the day, I guess every politician has to remember that voters now are unforgiving and unsparing. All right. Uh, well, you'll find all the coverage as and when the real election battle kicks off. Of course, before all of that, you'll have the budget coverage just uh, a month away from now. Let's talk about some of the stories you'll find on the website BloombergQuinn.com, though. The government has proposed a penalty of up to 1 crore rupees on entities that violate the provisions of the Aadhaar Act with an additional fine of up to 10 lakh rupees per day in case of continuous non-compliance. That's a PTI report. U.S. House Democrats, and I mentioned this at the start of this program, will use their new majority Thursday uh, to vote on legislation to end the U.S. government shutdown without adding funds for President Donald Trump's border wall. But the GOP-controlled Senate already has signaled it won't act without White House consent. 
The plan is to pass two separate bills, one reopening eight departments, which have been closed since the 22nd of December through September 2019, and another temporarily reopening the Department of Homeland Security through Feb 8. Well, that's all we have for you in this edition of All You Need to Know, but news and updates continue on the other side of this very short break.